As the point series resumes, Gravedigger's Tyler Menega looks to continue on towards his first Stadium Series championship of his career, while Chris Kohler tries to maintain his meteor-like rise after his first racing win of the season. And Zombies' Bari Musauer hopes to hold on to third place in the series point standings with another epic freestyle win. Stadium Championship Series Blue continues next with round 17 of Monster Jam. in beautiful Seattle, Washington, the home of the Seattle Seahawks and tonight's home for the superstars of Stadium Championship Series Blue. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leslie Mears, joined as always by Adam and Knapp. And after a few weeks away, the point series resumes tonight in Seattle. So Adam, what does a layoff do to a driver? You know, in Supercross, Leslie, we had that break in the middle of the year where you got to take time off and you had a choice. You could either keep going and race on that off weekend or you could take a break. For me, the advantage and, and disadvantage to this is what do you need as a driver? Do you need to take that break or do you need to stay sharp? Interesting. We'll see how that works here. Tyler Meninga is one of those drivers who has been active. He did not take a break. He dominated the arena events, winning all eight event championships and has yet to show any signs of slowing down. So as we pick up tonight, do you expect him to just continue just plowing forward? You know what? I got a chance to talk to Tyler and he is excited to get back to these points paying events. But my big concern for Tyler is he raced and did all those rounds. That's going to be a lot of wear and tear on that truck. I think for Tyler, if he stays sharp with all these events he just did and avoids any kind of truck damage, he's going to do well tonight. One of the drivers who will be bringing that pressure to Tyler is Monster Mutt's Chris Kohler. He's coming off his very first racing win in Arlington. And earlier we caught up with the second generation star in this UNOH pit report. To have a racing win to me is huge because it's showing that Team Scream isn't just a freestyle team. It shows that we are the whole bunch. We can race, we can freestyle, we can do skills, we can do all of it. So the race win's huge to me because it's, it's, it's personal skill, you know. You, I race, I beat Gravedigger, I beat Shaker. And even to be against them, like just to be in the same building as them is an honor. So it's fun to really do, especially as a rookie. I know I'm fast, I've been fast before, but when your truck doesn't work with you, it's kind of a bummer. So to be able to get back and race full speed, have the truck at 100%, I mean, I showed what I can do. Now I get to defend my title this week, hopefully just as fast as last week. We can continue doing the same speed. The track's a little wider, so you gotta kind of accommodate for that compared to the driving side last week. But hopefully we come out on top again. And Chris will try to do that tonight against 11 other drivers, including a rookie making her stadium debut in El Toro Loco. That'll be Chelsea Van Cleve. So what are your thoughts on the big debut for here in a huge stadium? You know, Chelsea's been waiting for this moment a long time, Leslie. She went to UNOH and then went to Monster Jam University studying under Tom Mintz. She has a little bit of international experience as well. Chelsea has skills to be successful and she's tasted victories in the arenas already. Her stadium series debut is tonight in Seattle, but she needs to try to calm the nerves and learn as much as she can. Let's catch up on the season point standings here. It's been Tyler Menega at the top, Ryan Anderson trailing by 46, Bari Musauer still in third, but 125 points away from the top. Then Chelsea Van Cleve and Corey Rummel round out the top five with 180 points still available. Three other drivers still mathematically can catch Tyler, but realistically, Ryan Anderson is the only other driver who stands a chance here. So tonight, Drivers will compete in three different events. It'll be bracket style racing, the Great Clips Skills Challenge, and then freestyle competition. 12 points to the winner of each one of those events. Then we'll tally them up to crown our overall event champion. So Adam, let's get into track talk here. And it's a different climate here for these drivers in the Pacific Northwest, which means different dirt. So you've navigated the Seattle dirt here. Tell us about it. You know, it is a little bit different this year because almost every single year I've been here for Supercross, 
It has rained, rained, and rained some more. This year, it seems to be a little bit more on the dry side. That allows the truck to have a more consistent slide around the corner, which is always fun. One of the challenges the drivers do face, though, is this dirt is gray, and the overcast weather makes it very hard for the drivers to see the ruts and the edges, causing them to make a few more mistakes than normal. Let's take a look at the first competition of the night, which will be racing. Here is the bracket set. We can see our drivers in round two have a buy run. Adam, which one are you watching here in round one? I mean, it has to be Jim versus Ryan DeSharoon, the two veterans of Monster Jam going head to head. Ryan won here back in 2019 and had confidence on this dirt, but Jim has that Avenger truck running really well. Well, it's the race that's going to kick things off for us here. So it will be Jim Kohler in Avenger versus Ryan DeSharoon in Shaker. And so they'll be able to decide this year. Remember in 2019, Disharoon actually took that racing victory. I think you mentioned that, Adam. So he's got a he's got a line on this track. Ryan slides out a little bit on the start because of that bad angle, but goes inside. Jim catches the pawn. Looks like he misses the race ramp. But they're still about even going into the next set of turns as we enter the final bend here. Coming down to the wire. Close one. We're going to have to take a look here at our original Super Glue Glue to the action replay. Jim Kohler catches that pod. Looks like he doesn't get that outside front wheel on the race ramp. What a bummer. So that'll be a five second penalty with Shaker advancing. We'll take a look now. Cynthia Gautier in Lucas Stabilizer versus Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger. Ryan making his first appearance here in Seattle. Cynthia a little wide off the start. Ryan Anderson nice and inside. He sets the truck well, coming around the first corner ahead. Man, he's got a two truck link lead here going into this final set of turns. Silky smooth for Ryan Anderson. He'll easily pick up the win here and advance. Man, Ryan Anderson coming right around the inside of that pod, catches the inside of that step up, a perfect run. Our third race will feature two rookies in El Toro Locos, Chelsea Van Cleve making her stadium debut up against Joe Foley in Axe. Joe's really struggled in racing this year, so this is a point where he might be able to take advantage of Chelsea's inexperience. Chelsea goes very wide, and it looks like Joe Foley got a good exit off the start and inside on the pod. Really trying to get her feet wet on this Seattle dirt. She has some mechanicals and did not get to practice at all yesterday. And so uh, it's going to show here for practice, and Joe Foley will take the win in Axe. Yeah, a little bit of nerve for Chelsea, which is totally fine. It's her first event. Slides out, pushes the truck a little hard coming into that last corner. Unfortunately, comes up short. Shows us, too, that that track can be a little slick out there, which might be good for some of our drivers. So our final first-round matchup pits last round's racing winner Chris Kohler in Monster Mutt up against another second-generation driver, Colt Stevens in Thunder Roris. And we're seeing a little bit of that same sideways launch from Kohler that we saw in Arlington that helped him get that racing victory. Ooh, pushed it too hard into the first corner. Huge mistake by Chris. See if he can get it. Oh my gosh! That is why you always stay in it, Monster Jam fans. You never know what's going to happen. What? What was that? We're definitely going to have to take a look at the original Super Luke Luke's the action replay. Cole comes into the corner, grabs the edge of those BKT tires, and it flips that Thunder Warriors truck right up and over. So a little bit of a mulligan there for Kohler as he will move into round two against Grave Digger, then Bad Company versus Axe, Megalodon versus Son of a Digger, and Zombie versus Shaker. Coming up, the racing competition heats up as four more trucks enter the bracket. Find out who has what it takes to get to the first 12 points of the night. We are back in Seattle for the second round of racing. And up first in round two, it's former Monster Jam Rookie of the Year, Bari Musauer in Zombie. And representing the metal shop, it's Ryan Disharoon in Shaker. Both off to a really good start. Let's see who catches that inside pod. Both clear it perfectly. This is going to be a good race, Leslie. Musauer with a slight edge here at the halfway point. Make sure you got to get those two front tires on the ramp and check it out. A little makeup there. I think it's going to be Disharoon taking the win. 
You can see Zombie coming around this corner. Oh, and he misses the race ramp with his front tire. Man, that five second penalty, it'll get you every time. These two are gonna try to avoid that here. It'll be Megalodon's Corey Rummel and son of a digger's Ryan Anderson. I love the deep stage too on top of the pod to get down that hill a little faster. Both the boys off to a good start. Ryan seems to be on tonight, sets the truck, has a slight advantage, only a little bit over Corey Rummel. Remember, Corey made it to the finals in Arlington in the last round, riding high on that. But it's not gonna be enough as Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger will take the win. Corey Rummel just looks like he pushes a little bit wide. Ryan Anderson setting that truck just right, getting to the inside of the back of the step up, executes perfectly. So our next race here will pit John Gordon in bad company against Joe Foley in Axe. So John 14 and 16 with a racing win in San Diego to kick off the season. And this is the first time that these two have met. Oh, John Gordon it's a early. little slide out at the beginning. See if he can recover. Joe Foley a good second corner, but off the edge of the race ramp again. It's going to be close to get those two tires over the top. Look at Gordon making up that time. Point and a shoot on that strategy, and that's what's going to do it for bad company as he will pick up the round win and move on. Here comes Joe Foley. Doesn't get his right front tire on the race ramp. Unfortunate, takes the loss. The round two final will feature the series points leader Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger against Chris Kohler in Monster Mutt. Just loving that right lane out there. Oh, Chris over rotates the corner, has to put the brakes on, goes over the top of the pod. But it's not over. Tyler hit that turn pod around the first corner, and he's very, very slow. And it looks like it's a mechanical on Gravedigger. So Kohler, another sort of mulligan here. Man, he's been so lucky this round, moving on. Man, I'll tell you what, he's a lucky dog tonight. You can see there is definitely something wrong with Gravedigger. The streak is now at six in a row for Chris Kohler as we look at the semifinal bracket. It'll be Shaker with the fastest round two time versus Son of a Digger and Bad Company versus Monster Mutt. Can Chris Kohler continue his improbable run and make it two racing wins in a row? Find out when we come back. We are back in Seattle, Washington, where we've reached the racing semifinals. Up first, it'll be Ryan Disharoon in Shaker with lane choice against Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger. And as fast as these two have been in the heat of the season here, this is going to be quite the battle. Both Ryans off to a great start. It all comes down to that first corner set. So advantage goes to Son of a Digger here. But we've seen a lot of things happen in that final corner on that side. And not what I was expecting here. Son of a Digger taking out Shaker by about three truck lengths. You can see Ryan pushes wide right there. It's just a little on the slippery side. And the other Ryan Anderson gets the job done like he needed to. So our final matchup this round will pit the red hot Chris Kohler in Monster Mutt against John Gordon in Bad Company. So this is Chris's third semifinal round appearance. John making his fifth semifinal appearance this year. Chris choosing that same lane again. Let's see if John Gordon can make up some time. Chris Kohler makes a mistake and hits the turn pod. Yeah, that slippery track you were talking about really causing problems. Is it going to cause a problem for Gordon? And it will not, and he will slide his way into the final round of racing en route to trying to get another championship. Here's Chris Kohler. It's a little slippery coming in, and then it gets tacky as the lane comes around, grabs the turn pod, overcorrects a little bit, and John Gordon gets the win. So the finals are set with Son of a Digger against Bad Company. Ryan had the fastest time in the semis, so now he'll have lane choice over John. So as Son of a Digger and Bad Company get to the line, three penalties so far have been enforced, Adam. What can Ryan and John try to do to get both front tires down on that ramp? 
Man, I'll tell you what, the entrance of the corner off that gray lane is so slippery, and then it gets tacky as you come out of that second corner. One of the hardest things is to go from slippery to tacky at the same time. So they have to be a little bit slower, a little bit more consistent on the throttle, and be mindful of that last finish line jump. So here we go. It's gonna be Anderson versus Gordon for the racing final. John Gordon, Ryan Anderson, both off to a good start. John Gordon sets the truck nicely, gets a good first and second corner. Yeah, John Gordon, super smooth here, but this has been Ryan Anderson's forte, finishing with that long sweeping run. Is it gonna be too wide? It is. John Gordon gonna walk away with it and take the win. And for Ryan Anderson, it all came down to the bad bounce off that race ramp pushes wide and John Gordon gets the finish. And he picks up his second racing win of the season. So bittersweet here for John and he gets 12 points as we check in on the first BKT overall point standings for round 17. So Anderson in second, Disharoon in third, Chris Kohler in fourth, Corey Rummel in fifth, four points behind our leader. Next up in Seattle was the Great Clip Skills Challenge. Drivers could attempt two technical maneuvers on two wheels or opt to do a donut. Each driver was judged by the fans on creativity, skill, and execution. So 12 points on the line. Let's take a look at our top contenders. Coming in fifth was Chelsea Van Cleve with an impressive sky wheelie in El Toro. I <laughs> gotta love that. Look at her throw that thing to the moon. Sends it up, gets the sky wheelie, nice landing. Bari Moosauer laying down a donut in Zombie for fourth. Getting that thing going, nice spin, throwing the dirt. The crowd loved it. Third place was Gravedigger's Tyler Menega with that stoppy combo. Tyler always very good in these two wheel skills challenges. This is something we've seen time and time again from Tyler. Throws it into the nose wheelie, gets the moonwalk. Unbelievable balance and a 12,000 pound truck on those BKT tires. Corey Rummel landed Megalodon in second with a popper and a moonwalk. Yep, perfect popper, grabs that throttle just right, gets the nose wheelie back to a moonwalk, back to a nose wheelie. An impressive score of 9.778 would be what Ryan Anderson would earn in Son of a Digger with this bicycle moonwalk combo. Ryan Anderson showing out here in Seattle. Throws it perfectly balanced on those BKT tires into the bicycle. And then he steers the front wheel to balance the truck. Unbelievable run by Ryan Anderson. With his fourth skills win of the season, Ryan gets 12 points, which puts him on top of the latest BKT overall point standings. Corey Rummel and John Gordon are tied at 19. Barry Moosauer with 16, seven off the lead. And Tyler Menega rounds out the top five. So we're halfway through in Seattle. Only one competition remains. It's freestyle. It's next. You're watching Stadium Championship Series Blue at the home of the Seattle Seahawks Lumen Field. Welcome back to round 17. Through two competitions, Ryan Anderson has the lead, and it's been a great start for him. So, Adam, what have you witnessed from him that's been able to let him take over this event? There's a few things that I've witnessed. One is just the consistency, and then I think I just see a little bit of spark out of Ryan Anderson. Ryan Anderson was actually one of those drivers that took a break, just got refreshed, and maybe that's all he needed to kind of get that momentum going. On top of all that, Ryan Anderson knows it's crunch time right now. If he wants to beat Tyler in this championship, he has to get it going. Yeah, and speaking of Tyler, he has struggled a bit tonight due to a power issue during racing caused by the lane selector box, and it was replaced after skills, so Gravedigger should be good to go, but what's it going to take for him to bounce back here? You know, he really has to clear his mind. He's eight points behind Ryan Anderson That's in this competition right now, and that is hard to overcome. For Tyler, he needs to stop thinking about this event and he needs to think about big picture and that's championship points. Do the best you can in freestyle and salvage anything and everything you can to get those points back on Ryan. So let's catch up with the BKT overall point standings entering freestyle. So Ryan Anderson has the lead right now. Corey Rummel and John Gordon, four points behind. Barry Moosauer, seven points off the lead and Tyler Meninga with that deficit you mentioned of eight points. 
So as we take a look at the freestyle order, we have breaking news. Chelsea Van Cleve will not compete in freestyle due to damage El Toro Loco suffered in the skills competition. So there was chassis damage there. So her first stadium freestyle will have to wait for another day. Yeah, man, that is so tough for Chelsea. It was so cool to see her get fourth place in that skills competition. And we're all going to love to see her back soon. So there's quite a battle going on right now for a second between John Gordon and Corey Rummel. And so they're tied right now. So who do you think is going to come out on top here in freestyle? Who has the advantage? I mean, I'm giving that to John Gordon 100% of the time. When you're in the freestyle running order, the sooner you can be, the more advantage you have. Right now, this is John Gordon's to give away. Corey Rummel has been super consistent. He's been doing well all season, but in the grand scheme of things, it's going to be super fun to watch both these boys go at it for that second place position. So let's head to the track for our first freestyle run of the night. And our first competitor is going to be Ryan Dishroon from Del Mar, Maryland in Shaker. Getting a little bit better each time out, Adam. He's just been getting better and better all season. At the beginning of the season in San Diego, he had so many truck problems and he could barely keep the truck on the track. And now it seems like they got all the bugs worked out. Everything's going for the metal shop boys and he just keeps getting better and better and better. It's what Chris Kohler always says, right? You got a truck that works with you and not against you. Yes. And when you have that, then you can really kind of let your skills shine because we know that he puts in a lot of laps on that practice trap that they have at home. Yeah, and he's talked about that with me before. And, you know, he said this season, I had a chat with him uh, in Anaheim, and he said, I've done so many skills challenges and practiced in this truck to get ready for this season, and you can definitely see it's paying off. Nice little combo here onto the pod with the slap wheelie. You haven't seen a lot of that this season, so a little variety is always good here. Nothing too crazy so far. You know, it looks like he needs to start carrying a little bit more momentum. A little bit of a bad bounce there off the pod, too. And I think these drivers have really learned this season, too, that you've got to kind of get through that first 30 seconds to make sure you get a score. I mean, that's really what it's about. And so we're seeing them make more traditional hits, is what we'll call them. Some big air, some pod to pod jumps in that first 30 seconds. And then once they know they're in the safe zone to receive a score, that's when they really start to turn it up, which is what we're seeing a little bit more of here. Yeah, he's definitely starting to turn it up right now. Good vision by Ryan in that shaker truck on that last jump on the pod, threading the needle. Here he comes into the backflip. First one out in freestyle and nails it. Unfortunately, though, it looks like Oh, no, nope. he's going to keep going. I thought for a second they shut him off for some broken parts. OK, Ryan, for a second onto the pod. Here we go. Oh, a huge case onto the pod. And he'll say, that's enough. That's <laughs> enough. I think that we kicked it off in style here. So we'll take a look at our original super glue glue to the action replay. Nice backflip. Big bounce off that backflip ramp, setting those four BKT tires down nicely. So an 8.398 to kick off freestyle. Disharoon hits the first backflip of the night. Who's next? Find out when Monster Jam returns. Welcome back to round 17 of Monster Jam in Seattle. Earlier today, thousands of fans walked the track at Lumen Field, taking part in the pit party. If you want to meet the drivers, see the trucks up close, make sure you attend the pit party when Monster Jam comes to a stadium near you. And during the break, Cynthia Gautier gave it a go in Lucas Stabilizer, and she would roll the truck, and her score of 7.20 falls short here of the lead. So up next from Columbus, Michigan, the two-time World Finals Freestyle Champion, Jim Kohler, coming out here in Avenger. He said one of the biggest things for him this season is adjusting to the ramps on this track because they send you more out on the track than up. And that's been his style for so many years is to kind of launch that truck straight up in the air that he's had to adjust to that driving. How hard is it to make a change after you've been doing something for so long the same way, Adam. You know, it is so difficult. That is in his veins, and he's practiced that so much. The trucks are changing, the tracks are changing, and not to mention that, but the track builders also will change sometimes, too. It depends on who's building the jump that weekend and how they think it should be. So that's even more difficult. But one of the things that Jim Kohler can do if he wants a little bit more air is kind of come up slower to the jump and really nail that throttle as you're going off the ramp. And Jim Kohler has the 
huge advantage of having a ton of horsepower under that Avenger hood. Yeah, changed the motor program this year. He got a bigger motor. They've been having some motor issues team-wise this year, but he's got that big, powerful motor back in his truck once again to utilize that on these jumps. Nice save by Jim Kohler. It looks like he's off to a great start in this freestyle run, Leslie. It's exciting to see from him. And, you know, he told me he's just excited to be out here, too, with his four trucks on the same tour for the first time. And he said it's a lot of work, but it definitely yields a lot of dividends, too. Nice donut. Something we don't see very often from Avenger. Putting that horsepower to good use. Jim Kohler doing a lot of turning around right now. Looks like he's going to hit the step up. Let's see a nice, nice air. There we go. Mr. Excitement himself. I love it. That's what I like to see. And that's what he's known for here. So he had to give the Seattle fans just a little love there. A huge air off this step up. Look at how high the Avenger is in the sky. Unreal. 7.623 there for Kohler. So our overall event leader, Ryan Anderson, up next in Son of a Digger. Lays off the throttle a little bit on that, on the back side of the step up, starts off a little slower than normal. When this really puts him in a quality position to do something ridiculous in freestyle, you know, as the fourth truck out here, having such a great event so far, and he really needs a big score if he wants to land that overall. And I think all day, he's just been clicking here in Seattle. And maybe, you know, maybe it was that break. Maybe he just needed to freshen up and kind of get his wheels underneath of him, get those BKT tires right underneath of him. And right now, Ryan Anderson putting together a solid freestyle run, getting that 30 seconds out of the way, not flipping on the hood. And now he needs to get to it. Huge launch by Anderson right to the center pod sideways cross thread action up there as he checks up to spin it into the backflip. Oh, nope, just kidding. Uh, Going to give us a little bit more of that air. We got a little bit of smoke coming out of the truck. Throw it into a combo. There you go. Get that nose wheelie. One thing, though, Ryan told me is that Bryce, his crew chief, got to completely go through the truck on the time off and fix everything. And he said that's made a world of difference. There were a lot of little things that had been plaguing them, and he got to fix those in that downtime so he can have even more confidence in his truck. And that relationship between these two is just really something special. It definitely is. Here he comes into the backflip. Oh, he lands it! Oh I did not see that coming. I've not seen a backflip into a cartwheel, and then he's still rolling. Leslie, I thought he was on the hood. I thought little it was bit, over. Little crab walk right there. There might be something wrong with still the rear steer, but he is going for Seattle right now. Nicely done there for Anderson. We'll take one more look at our original super glue glue to the action replay. Landing on that back rear tire, over rotates a bit, but a huge save. And then you can see that crab walk right off the ramp. Doesn't have a care in the world to finish off his freestyle run. He is pumped, as he should be, with a 9.769 to set the bar here in freestyle. So next up, it'll be tonight's racing winner, John Gordon in bad company. And he trails by four for that overall event lead here. And you said this is the prime spot for him. But how much does it impact his run that Ryan Anderson just went out there and threw it down? Man, it is going to impact his run so much. The crowd was on their feet. You could hear the crowd getting so loud in the background for Ryan Anderson. And now John Gordon has to come out and try to top that. It's going to be very, very tough. Well, he's stepping up to the plate here so far with those nice combos. And he's just such a smooth driver. You know, we talk about it a lot, just how smooth he transitions and just his awareness in the air to brake check and bring it back down perfectly, just like he did for that slap wheelie. Yeah, and we've talked about that before, how sometimes, you know, it might hurt him. It makes it look so easy where when Ryan Anderson goes out, he gets a little buck wild like that, and John Gordon's on his hood. Oh, and he just can't get enough of a roll 
to let the treads on the BKTs grab some traction. Let's take another look at it. A little uneven off the race ramp, catches the side of the pod, flips the truck on the hood, and comes up short. Ryan Anderson throwing down some serious action here. But for this round's action of the week, we join Arena Championship Series East in Toledo, Ohio, with Lindsey Reed in Scooby-Doo. Man, it is always fun to see the different style trucks that Monster Jam brings. But Lindsey Reed and Scooby-Doo, look at her turning the front wheel, getting a little action, getting the crowd on their feet, setting a perfect sky wheelie, and then sitting it on the bumper. Nice job, Lindsey Reed. Yes, yeah, she is the queen of those arena sky wheelies, just getting it done and showing out. That's Lindsey Reed with this round's action of the week. More action is coming up in Seattle. Will anyone challenge Ryan Anderson? Find out when Freestyle continues next. We are back with more Stadium Championship Series Blue at Lumen Field in Seattle. Ryan Anderson leads the event and could be returning to World Finals to try to win his fourth World Championship. If you want to join us at Nissan Stadium for the biggest event of the year, head on over to MonsterJam.com and get your tickets now. During the break, the freestyle action continued with Chris Kohler in Monster Mud. He'd make a great save but got shut off and left too much time on the clock. Then it would be Colt Stevens and Thunder Roris with a rollover with 21 seconds left and could only manage a 7.427. Now it's time for the former Extreme Air Award winner, Corey Rummel in Megalodon. His only shot at the event championship would be to take the lead from Ryan Anderson and hope the remaining drivers also finish ahead of him. But I think more importantly here, it's the battle for second that he was in with John Gordon. Yeah, and I think right now he's sitting in a prime time spot. One of the things I'm thinking about if I'm Corey Rummel and I'm sitting in the driver's seat right now is I have to fill that 30 seconds. If I can fill the 30 seconds and get a backflip in, I think we have no problem beating John Gordon for that second place spot. Nice little combo there. I like he's utilizing that big motor that we talked about to make that power, to lift that heavy truck. And, and Corey designing the axles and the planetaries on this truck to make them a lot heavier, a lot sturdier out here to withstand all of the carnage that they put them through in freestyle. You know, one of the disadvantages of making your truck so heavy duty is things like that. When I'm watching it, you're coming out of the corner, the truck's just a little sluggish and can't quite get as much air off those race ramps, but he seems to make it work well. Yeah, and he said that like one of the issues he has with the truck in racing, he can't make left turns. So if we see him trying to make a left turn in freestyle, it's the same deal here for him. He really struggles with that maneuver for some reason. In lots of nice big air here though. Nice air, nice and smooth, but looking conservative. Perfect backflip execution, landing on all four. Now, Corey, get it going. Unfortunately, that's going to be it for Rummel. Let's take another look at our backflip. Great job on the backflip, perfect speed, great execution, great rotation, landing on all four BKT tires, and a great score for Corey Rummel. Bari Musauer hitting the track next in Zombie. Signature slap wheelie to start things off. He's definitely known for beginning his freestyles that way. And he told me, you know, he used to kind of plan everything out, but now this year he's got kind of a recipe for success. And first off, he's got to get through that first 30 seconds to make sure that he can get a score. And, you know, I think that just straight comes from he wants to be consistent in this championship. If you're not getting that freestyle score, it hurts you so bad in the overall event points and in the championship. As you can see right now, that hood's getting a little loose, though, on the front of that truck. Yeah, and with every jump, it that comes up in the air, blocks his view. And so remember, our drivers sit in the center of the truck. And so anything over that center windshield, they are not able to see. They're looking down through the wheel wells by those BKT tires to try to see the track. And I know we've mentioned this so many times, but when I got to go to MJU and actually drive the Monster Jam truck, you are strapped in so tight with a neck brace and a helmet and a harness, you can't look left or right. You have no peripheral vision at all. So whatever's directly in front of you is what you see. 
That hood's still giving him fits. It looks like he's trying to maybe get a couple nice bounces or rebounds to where it will actually fly off so he can see out there. Yeah, something is definitely going on. Here he comes to a stop. So what they're going to do is they're going to come out, they're going to take off the hood, and then the time will begin again for Barry Musauer and Zombie. So hard to stop the run in the middle. Then the crowd kind of, you know, they have less energy and they kind of slow down. And then all of a sudden, they got to get ramped back up and Bari has to get ramped back up. And it's like in the middle of your run, it damaged your, your score so much to have to stop. I don't know. I think it was me. I'd be just mad. I would be straight <laughs> angry and I would just drive angry afterwards, which is not what we're seeing. Cool, calm, and collected and a great execution here from Zombie on the backflip. Let's see if he gets mad now. There we go. First gear, second gear, huge air onto the pod. Big bounce. Nice save by Bari. Unbelievable. Locks up those BKTs and brings it to a halt. And Zombie Nation loves it. Here he comes into the backflip ramp. Great execution. A little bit of over rotation, but he might have planned that. Good job by Bari Musauer. Now with that run, he takes over second place. Ryan Anderson still has the lead. Corey Rummel has Megalodon in third, with Shaker in fourth and Avenger currently in fifth. Ryan Anderson is two trucks away from leaving Seattle with the hardware. Will he get it done? Find out when Monster Jam returns. Welcome back to Lumen Field. Before we get back to the action, let's take one more look at the BKT overall event leaderboard coming into freestyle. So Ryan Anderson has the lead with Corey Rummel in second. John Gordon tied with Corey at 19 points. Moose Hour is seven points behind Ryan and Tyler Meninga in an off night sits fifth. And out next from Leicester, Massachusetts, it's the rookie Joe Foley in Axe. Joe Foley pedal to the metal right now. A big air off the backside of the race ramp. And you would have thought with him being a rookie that he would have been less aggressive. But I think as the season has progressed, we've seen him get more aggressive. Yeah, and I think that's because, you know, maybe Joe Foley's getting used to fixing everything on this truck so he can fix it a little bit faster. Boy, he has had his share of damage this year. Two blown motors out here, a number of other mechanicals, and we see a lot of fiberglass on the track right now. So that'll be something that'll have to be fixed as well. But, you know, when you love what you do, it's not a job, right? Absolutely. And, you know, Joe Foley, he is a rookie, so he has a lot to learn. But I love that he's a little throttle heavy. That always gets the crowd excited. It makes him a, a definite member of Team Scream. If you didn't have that heavy foot, then it wouldn't be. Nice slap wheelie. Got to get it stopped so he doesn't hit the side of the stadium. Making good use of the track here. I love how he's going outside, inside, trying to hit a bunch of different jumps out here to give some variety to his run. Getting another little slap wheelie in there. See if he can get it onto the pod. Nice job. Get that thing settled down, Joe. Good triple. Let's see if he can make this turn. Going to have to back up just a little bit. And in the criteria, that does detract from the score for our judges here. That's all right, though. He did it pretty quick. And that's the biggest thing, right? Just make sure you don't lose any time. Yeah, if you're sitting there, you're kind of messing around. You can't find reverse. But it looks like Joe's coming up to the backflip. Here we go. Come on, goose it. All right. Oh, 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 Joe barely pulled that off. What an amazing run. A little hesitant there to give it that extra throttle, but he finally brings it around. You can see Joe just comes in a little slow, drags the bumper, under rotates, but hits the throttle. Oh, man, what a run for Axe. So that will bring us now to our final competitor, the four-time Triple Threat Series champion and current series points leader, Tyler Meninga in Gravedigger. So he's got Ryan Anderson in first in freestyle. He has no shot at the event championship here, but a win would salvage his night and get him back some critical points. You know, is he thinking about the win or is he thinking about the points oh, here? Oh, what's going on, Leslie? Do we got more electrical issues? See if he can get back fired. And you mentioned he had eight Arena Series events, and that will definitely take a toll on your truck. They are small, but they are mighty in performance. 
And so he'll continue on with that little hiccup. Oh my gosh! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Tyler Benico with a huge air onto the pod. Great setup by Matt Gone on those shocks to let that truck absorb it like that. Oh man, Tyler's like, you know what? If my truck breaks, it breaks. I'm going big here in Seattle. I think that stall out maybe made him drive a little angry. <laughs> I think it did. Another little brake check cases onto the pod. Tyler's got me excited right now. Man, I am pumped. I haven't seen this much big air in the same run for a while. Creeping up to that backflip ramp. Perfect backflip, throws it into reverse, now into forward. Click that second gear and jump onto the pod. Oh, goes around it. Another big air off the step up. So he just continues the carnage here after the backflip moonwalk combo. He said, that's not enough yet. Let's have some more. Man, I'll tell you what, Tyler is putting on a show here in Seattle. Oh, a little offsetter. Can he make the save? Flips it on the hood. Oh, and the side slap gets him there at the end. What a run for Meninga. It's not enough, though, a 9.443. Good enough for second place here on the freestyle event. Tyler with a huge air onto that pod, and then there he is with the backflip moonwalk combo, and then another big air at the end of the run. Little side slap gets off-centered, lands on the hood, but it doesn't matter. What a great run by Gravedigger. So Tyler's score will put him in second. Not enough to take out Ryan Anderson, who gets his fourth freestyle win of the season. Bari Musauer takes the last spot on the podium, and Corey Rummel and Joe Foley end the competition in fourth and fifth, respectively. Ryan adds 12 points to his total to finish with 35, which puts him on top of the final BKT overall leaderboard of the night. Corey Rummel finishes in second with 28, Tyler Menega in third with 26, Moosauer also ends the round with 26, and John Gordon rounds out the top five with 21 points. So a near perfect night here for Anderson as he wins his fifth event championship of the season. And right now, let's hear from the overall event champion. And tonight was an amazing night. It's my, not only my first time here in Seattle, having a good time, but also almost had a perfect night. Everything but the racing finals went as good as it could go for me. I had one of my best freestyles of the year, probably my best freestyle of the year. When I took off towards the ramp, my rear steer had an issue, electrical issue. The cylinder went out on one side, turning my rear steer all the way. I was already headed to the ramp. I was already committed. It was kind of one of those things where if I stopped, man, it would have been a bummer. So I went for it and it was a crazy crash. To be honest with you, this nice loamy dirt we have here though, really sucked up a lot more than I expected. I expected it to be an insanely rough hit. It really wasn't bad. Bent one four-link bar, and that's basically it. So the truck is not bad. It's, it looked really bad, but it actually was super smooth. Surprisingly to me, I was anticipating it being bad. Tyler's lead is now 37. Ryan said he doesn't want Tyler to have a bad weekend, but it almost feels like that's what he needs if he's going to get it done out here. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if Ryan Anderson keeps driving like that, he's going to be unstoppable, and this championship is going to come down to the wire. It should be an exciting finish for sure this season. Next up for Stadium Championship Series Blue is a trip to State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. We look forward to seeing you there. For Adam and Knapp, I'm Leslie Mears. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you right here next time on Monster Jam.